evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joining my son Jordan Spivey. And in this video tutorial, we're going to be going over the properties of sound and the Doppler effect. So let's get started. So let's take a look at our first property, which is the speed of sound waves. And sound waves are longitudinal waves. So sound waves travel in this manner. And you have your compressions and your rarefactions. So we take a look, they travel by compressions and rarefactions. They travel through a medium, which is a solid liquid or gas. So here are these compressions where they're tightly packed. And then here are these rarefactions where they're spread apart. So I go ahead and label those two. There's the compressions and there are the rarefactions. And then sound tends to travel faster through solids and slowest through gases. And the reason why is because solids particles are closer together and are more dense. So we take a look. In air, the speed of sound is 1,087 feet per second. But if you notice, in water, it's 4,629 feet per second. And then if you notice in steel, it's 16,850 feet per second. So here are gases where the sound molecules travel the slowest. And then here are our liquids right here. And then here are our solids where those sound molecules travel the fastest. And this all goes back to that concept of density. And since the particles are more closer together, more tightly packed than solids, that's why sound travels fastest in solids and slowest in gases because gas molecules are spread far apart. And solid molecules are very dense like we spoke about earlier. And now let's take another look at another property of sound, which is intensity and loudness. And intensity is how fast a wave's energy travels through a given area in a certain amount of time. And sound intensity levels are measured in decibels. As intensity increases, loudness increases. So we take a look at this example over here. If you notice... Our intensity is low right here because this X right here represents a whisper. But then as we move across, if you notice, the wave gets higher and higher. And this goes to our normal voice. So the intensity increases. But then as we get to Z, which is our loud voice, if you notice our loud voice the amplitude or the height of the wave is much higher, which increases that intensity, and it also increases the loudness. How do we know? Because as intensity increases, loudness increases as well. And then here's another example or a chart that shows the intensity of sound or the sound level. So if you notice, rustling leaves at a sound level or decibel level of at 10. But as we move up to a whisper, we're at 30, mosquito buzzing at 40, Normal conversation at 50 decibels, a vacuum is at 70 decibels, busy traffic 80 decibels, a subway power mower is at 100 decibels. Now, if you look at a siren or a rock concert, that's at the threshold of pain. So that means that's a lot of decibels and that's a lot of intensity and loudness of sound. Then if you look at a machine gun, machine gun is extremely loud. And then a nearby jet airplane, well, a nearby jet airplane is going to be at 150 decibels. And it's going to be extremely intense and extremely loud. Why? Because the waves are larger and much higher. That means they carry much more energy that travels to your ears. And now let's take a look at our next sound wave property. And that's going to be frequency and pitch. The frequency of a sound is the number of waves that pass a point in a given amount of time. The frequency of a sound wave depends on how fast the origin of the sound is vibrating. And the high frequency sounds have a high pitch and low frequency sounds have a low pitch. So let's take a look at this example below. And it says compare the frequencies of sound with the same loudness. Well, if you notice, if you compare both of these sound waves, notice that this top wave has less waves traveling through this point at a certain amount of time. And then you hit this bottom wave, you have more waves traveling through this point at a certain amount of time. So for this top wave, it's going to have a lower pitch sound with a lower frequency because we have less waves 
traveling through this point at this amount of time. But then if we look at this bottom wave, we have a higher pitch sound. And the reason why it's a higher pitch sound is because it has a higher frequency, which means that it has more waves traveling through this point in the same amount of time. And then we take another look and look at this example right here. Notice that the frequency is lower for this wave than it is for this wave. And how can we tell? Because we have fewer waves passing through in a certain amount of time. And then if we look at this wave right here, we have more waves passing through in a certain amount of time. So this is going to have a lower pitch and a lower frequency. And this wave right here is going to have a higher pitch and a higher frequency because it has more waves passing through in a certain amount of time. And now let's take a look at the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is a change in sound frequency caused by the movement of the sound source, movement of the listener, or both. But basically, to keep it simple, as a sound source approaches, the listener will hear a higher frequency. When the source of the sound moves away, the listener will hear a lower frequency. And this may look a little crazy to you, but I'm going to do this anyway. So I'm going to make a sound, and I'm going to move my head from back and forth. As I get closer to the microphone and further from the microphone, I want you to observe the loudness of the sound or the frequency of the sound. Uh... Hopefully you was able to notice that the closer I got to the mic, the higher the frequency of the sound or the higher the loudness of the sound. And that goes to show this example right here. So if you notice, as this ambulance moves closer and closer to this boy standing right here, that the wavelength becomes smaller and the frequency becomes higher. So we're looking at a wavelength that's like this and we're looking at a higher frequency. So that means that the sound is louder as it approaches him. But then if you look at this person right here, if you look at this girl over here, the sound has already passed her. So now you have a longer wavelength and a lower frequency. And what does that mean? That means the sound is actually lower. So the loudness is lower. And that's what the Doppler effect is for a moving sound source. So let's take another look at the Doppler effect. So if you notice, you have this car right here. They start the engine. The sound is going around. If you notice, the waves in front are smaller and the waves in the back of that car are longer or they have more space between them. Why? Because the frequency is higher in front of the car and is lower behind the car. That explains why a car's loudness gets lower as it moves further and further away from you and it gets higher as it moves closer and closer towards you. Now it's time for your check for understanding. And you're gonna answer the following questions using your knowledge of properties of sound and the Doppler effect. You can go ahead and pause the video now and I'll come around to your desk and make sure that you're understanding the learning and understanding the processes or understand the properties of sound and the Doppler effect. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey. And I want you to know that you're loved and you're cherished and your value. And I just want you to have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace and have a wonderful day.